It can be nerving going in for an interview. Well, we're gonna be covering in this video some recommendations, some tips that I can give you as a systems administrator. Interview tips, things that you could be doing, things that you could be doing to impress the interview panel and really how to present and prepare yourself and how to land that plane confidently so that you could potentially be in the running to land your sysadmin role. Hey everyone, my name is Emilio. I love technology and hopefully you do too. And if, I mean, if you're watching this, I'm sure you love tech. You've been in technology for some time if you're going for a sysadmin role. I release videos every week on all things tech, on stuff like this and a whole range of other technical topics that you'll find helpful. I've got a whole range of technical courses, training courses on Udemy and on Skillshare to help you as a sysadmin to get better at your job. So you can check those out if you wanna know a whole bunch more. And I would love it if you subscribed as well on the channel, click on the button on the bell. Now ultimately I can just tell you my tips, my recommendations, but you've got to do the hard work. You've got to do the hard work to be able to land that job. It's like, you know, going in for a test when you were at school and you don't do any of the study and then you rock up to your test and you expect to do really, really well or probably not unless you're an absolute genius, but you're likely going to struggle because you haven't done a lot of the work beforehand. Somebody who's going to become a sysadmin has already been a help desk person or somebody like a support analyst, a desktop analyst, and now you're becoming a lot more specialist as a systems administrator. Systems administrator, of course, they're gonna be looking after a lot of technologies around servers, around storage, perhaps around security, virtualization, the cloud, Active Directory, whole range of stuff. Here are some things that you could be trying and putting into place to nail the job, right? And as I said, this takes a lot of time Technically, you need to be skilled, you need to be good. Now, maybe you've already got an interview lined up and you're just wondering, am I technical enough to be able to get that job? Well, when you start looking for work, when you start applying for jobs, make sure that you actually have the skills needed that are listed in the position description. The position description for the job advert is gonna list a whole bunch of technologies. Do you have the skills to be able to confidently do all the things that it says. Now, just because it says you need to understand and manage Windows Server, and all you've done is you just log into a Windows Server here or there, that probably doesn't give you the skills to be able to administer Windows Server or be able to administer a domain control and Active Directory. Well, maybe you've logged a little bit with Active Directory and you've reset accounts here or there. You know how to create a user. You know how to delete a computer account, create a security group. But now, sysadmins, they need to know a little bit more about domain controllers. They need to understand a little bit more about how an AD domain is created, what a forest is, what a domain trust is. How does all that tie in together with DNS? Read all the tech that's in there. And if you're not confident in everything that's in there, don't fret, do not worry. Get yourself up to speed where you can. Building a home lab is a perfect way to do this. So building a home lab would be one way that you can master some of these skills. Perhaps in your job, you don't have the ability to be able to learn some of this stuff. And hey, just a little plug for my training course below, home lab stuff, click on that, full length training course on how to build your own home lab and what tech you need and start learning because that will definitely help you out. So you really have to understand the position, understand what the sys administrator does and understand everything that is listed on that position description. Now, just a little small note right there is the things that are generally listed on a position description are a wish list. So me, all right, I'm somebody who's who's interviewing somebody for a sysadmin. I'm gonna put together a list of things that I want this candidate to have. The chances of that candidate having all of it are very slim. Having most of it, pretty good chances, having half, you could probably find some. But I'm hoping that this candidate in the next three to six months, if I hire them, will be able to tick all of those boxes. So I'm looking to the future. I'm looking for somebody who's ambitious, who is passionate. More than anything else, I want somebody who loves technology, lives and breathes the thing. So somebody who's got that drive and passion and ambition in technology is always gonna be a good thing. So if you don't have that, get that because that's gonna go a long way when you're going in for that interview. So you have to go and get your CV, your resume, prepped, ready to go. List in there every single skill that you have got, technical skills that you've got. List in there every job that you have had that has been IT specific. Don't put stuff like you having a paper out or working down at a cheese factory. 
don't put that stuff in your CV. Put stuff in there that is relevant to your technology growth. Highlight the things in there that are more sysadmin related around the technologies that a sys administrator would actually do. Of course, highlighting any certificates that you've got, any education that you've done, they're always a good, good thing. You then start applying and hopefully you land yourself an interview. You now need to go and ideally research the company. Know what the company actually does. Who are their customers? What do they do? What are they selling? What is their product? Are they doing well? Like, are they making money or are they going bankrupt? Like if, if they're failing, if their money's losing, 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 you may not want to go work there because you may not have a job in six months. So make sure that the company's doing well. Do some research about the company on LinkedIn. Look up the people that are in the company, maybe your fellow IT teams. They're probably gonna have a LinkedIn profile somewhere. And then you've got to prepare for some questions because the whole interview is gonna be around questions, generally gonna be technical or behavioral or a mix of the two. Technical being, tell me about TCP IP. What is it? What port is HTTP running on? How do I log into a server? What's a ping command used for? Things like that could be very, very technically focused aim directly at you as a sys admin. Whole range of questions. So you need to go sit down, read the CV. Questions are gonna be based on the stuff, the tech that's in the CV. Draft yourself some questions. Get yourself some questions ready and then practice those questions. With a friend, with a colleague, with a family member, practice those questions. Get them to ask you the questions and then you be able to answer them. Being confident, but also being honest. And this is something that's very, very important is do not lie, do not make things up because your interview panel may actually be technical. They may be very technical, don't make things up. And if you don't know the answer, say that you don't know the answer, but that you're willing to learn about that. It's also very important for you to go and prepare questions to ask the interview panel. Don't leave this section empty. A lot of people, the amount of sysadmins that I've interviewed, when I ask them, do you have any questions for me? And they say, no, I don't. That's a bit concerning. Ask them questions about what do they like to do in the company? Why do they like to work here? How's the company doing? What will I be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Ask them questions that are personal, but also about the company. Show an interest around where you're going to be working. And once you've prepared all of these sort of questions, you then need to prepare for the interview itself once you do land that interview going in early, preparing. Now, whether it's gonna be a video call, which is very common nowadays, you're gonna have maybe the first round if there's more than one round. If it's in person, come prepared, come early. Don't be late. Never, never, never be late. Never, never, never be super, super early that you appear desperate. Look presentable. Really depends on the company, of course. If it's a company that requires, I mean, this is not a suit and tie, but it requires a shirt, put a shirt on. If it's a company that's a little bit more hip and cool, well, dress a little bit more hip and cool. Really understand what the company does so that you can then dress for the occasion. Bring a notepad and pen. Make sure that you're taking lots of notes. Make sure that you're listening because they may ask you a question that you don't know the answer for. But then maybe if you're successful in the first round, if you're gonna have multiple rounds and they call you in for a second round, they may re-ask you that same question. I've, uh, I've done that tactic a lot of times. Where if I like somebody and they've gotten a question wrong, I really wanna know if between interview one and interview two, that they've done their research and they've looked into the question that I've just asked them. And if they've gone and done the research, that says a lot to me because it shows me that they were caring enough to go and try to figure out what the answer was to that technical behavioral question. Being calm, cool, collective, being detailed enough to explain the answer to a question, but not rambling and going on forever. The amount of time that people just ramble on, I say, you know, tell me a little bit about Active Directory, and then they talk 10 minutes about Active Directory. I'm like, dude, just give me a short, little, concise answer. We've got a lot of questions to get through here. You've of course got to end strongly. Good handshake, goodbye, thank you. Really appreciate your time. When can I expect to hear back? Those sort of things are really, really good. If you're gonna have more than one round, it's not uncommon to have more than one round, try to avoid the discussion around money, around what you're gonna be doing, changes to your job description, maybe changing about where you're going to be working. Maybe the role says it's 100% on site and you're gonna say, hey, actually, do you have remote work available? Not the best time to ask that. Impress them first in the interview, and then you can talk the money, you can talk about the location, you can talk about whether travel's required, talk about that stuff 
later on. Don't talk about that stuff up front. If you wanna get even more confident in landing your sysadmin role and getting and passing that interview, in the video description, I've actually got a link there to a full length sysadmin interview course, specifically dedicated for what we've talked about right here, so that you can actually go confidently into your interview and learn a lot more about the process, what you should be doing, what you should be saying. We go specifically around sample questions, what sort of questions you could be asked, what questions you should be asking. Go and check out that course because it will definitely help you out. I'd love to know what you're currently doing. Are you currently a tech, a sysadmin, a services person? Let us know why you want to go for this sysadmin role. I mean, sysadmins are awesome. And hey, look, I release videos every week on tech. We talk about all things tech on this channel. So why don't you click on that subscription button on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. But that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for my next video as we talk about tech. We'll see you next time.